Hey everyone, I wanted to talk about the second version of the CAN server and some of the new features that have been added. The new CAN server has had a slight layout update and I put a better SD card holder in there. But the most significant thing is there's an optional second CAN bus card that can be added so it supports two CAN buses simultaneously. And so the big benefit to this is you don't need two servers, but most importantly, you can simultaneously receive from, uh, in the case of the Tesla vehicle and the chassis bus at the same time, and log them together uh, to the SD card. And uh, we'll go through some of the new features in the firmware as well, which has also been updated. So of course we support Model 3 and Model Y, but I'm working to add Model S and Model X support soon, which will connect directly to the diagnostic connector and also pick up two buses simultaneously. But just to show as an example, uh, you would connect the chassis connector bus and the OBD connector. And of course you would install this under your seat in the Model 3 and Model Y and I'll have a longer extension and this will go to the back of your console. And uh, it can sit under your seat and log everything. Um, and a lot of the big updates have been to the firmware. We've been working really hard to not only make the firmware much more reliable, but add a bunch of features and, and of course, add support for the two buses. So I'll walk through some of the new firmware features now. So I've connected to the CAN server over Wi-Fi. Uh, this, of course, can be done directly, but also over your home Wi-Fi network. Um, I'll show it here on the iPad, but it works on your phone and your computer. Um, and the front screen has a little bit more than before. Uh, we'll see we have Hardware Rev 2. Um, and uh, uptime, but what you see really here, the new part is CAN 0 and CAN 1. We can see they're both enabled, and if you see the speed changes, they're both receiving data right now. In fact, if I put the car in a drive, you should see the uh, data rate go up. And so again, at this, this front screen, you can also um, restart and download some backup settings, which is a nice feature. Um, and most significantly, do an over-the-air update with uh, some files I'll, I'll provide to you. Looking over here at the scripting tab, you'll notice we don't have separate scripts for the displays. Um, this makes it a little bit simpler for me to send uh, custom scripts to people, but uh, the nice thing is you have global variables now, and we have time variables, and so um, this allows you to write a Lua script to uh, you know ro th rotate through displays, and uh, anything you can kind of imagine, you literally can get um, uptime, time of day, and stuff like that, and uh, do whatever you can imagine with the scripts. Uh, you can actually trigger events as well. So, a lot more power there. Um, network hasn't changed much. Again, you can put in your home Wi-Fi network, and the CAN server will automatically log into that, like when you pull home. Um, a really nice feature we have added is support for um, something on your home network to grab files and logs off of your server. So, for example, if you've been logging uh, and someone writes support into Test Logger or another uh, Raspberry Pi app, something like that, it could automatically retrieve all of your logs every time you come home. It's super powerful, and I hope that uh, people support it. Um, you also notice it says Panda Connection. That's, of course, uh, your uh, what would Teslax would use, and uh, hopefully soon, Scan My Tesla may may be uh, working with us soon to to add support. Um, and when you see connected clients, well, there's the iPad and there's my two displays as well. The analysis tab hasn't changed too much. Again, you see all your signals that uh, it's currently decoding um, to be used with the scripts. Um, if you were just using logging capabilities or transmitting to another app, you don't need to worry about scripting and analysis. But um, again, uh, Tesla changes these things uh, with every firmware update uh, <laughs> randomly, and so sometimes we get caught by surprise. Um, but the really nice thing here is, uh, again, we see the values actively updating. Again, it's it's super powerful, and it's not if it's not clear, you can actually just hit one of these and it will copy it to the clipboard, which is really just a text file. Um, and you can, at any time, 
paste it back onto this web page, and it's a great easy way to um, add gauges uh, and, and work on them offline if you wanted to. Um, and then a big update here is the logging. It doesn't look much different, but the big update here is we're logging both buses. We can log both CAN buses at full speed, um, when, and Tesla really uses both bu buses at full speed. It's really tough and it's very impressive that uh, we've been able to get that to work on the SP32. Um, so again, if you put in an SD card, um, you can actually see the details, how much space, and format it, and so forth. Uh, what we also have now is a file browser, so you can see I've taken several raw logs. And again, I like to, I don't have any interval, interval logs here, but uh, when you say logging mode, right now it's not logging. If I hit save, as soon as I hit raw log, it is now logging at full speed. And the other nice feature I really like is this interval log. So instead of taking this huge log file, which will take up space very quickly and log every message, which is certainly useful for some analysis, but um, the interval log will, you can set the time here, 1,000 milliseconds. Every one second, it saves every message it's received once. So you're still capturing all the data, but uh, think about Teslify. It captures your, you know, very small amount of data, but it captures that once per minute during your drive. And... Teslify grabs a ton of data. It's super useful. Here you can grab all your data once per second, but it's still not using nearly as much data as the full rate messages, some of which come in 100 times a second or more. Um, but it'll save it to this interval file, which is logging right now. Um, and again, that interval log is going to be much smaller than a full strength log. And to me, it's very useful. Again, if you were running this all the time, you could just leave this on forever and a third-party app could log into the CAN server and retrieve that every time you get home. And uh, again, something like TestLogger or, or some Testify alternative could be super powerful. You'd have every piece of data from two buses on every device in your car. Just imagine what you can do with that. Um, the other choice we have, I'll just stop that by going back to none. We have um, filtered as well. And the filtered log actually uses these analysis items. So... Yes, we're using these for our scriptings and our, and our displays, but you could set up uh, particular items that you're particularly use, interested in, and it would save those, only those things, to a filtered log file. So, again, uh, if you're really interested in only, almost like you would with a phone app, I want to just look at five things or ten things and have nothing else but that data, you can do that in here, and it's all done internally in the CAN server, saved to the SD card, and again, the nice thing is, you know, I wanted, I just took that interval log, look how tiny that is, 40K. And if I want to download that, I click the little download and hit OK. Yes, I want to download. And uh, it downloaded that quickly onto my iPad or my phone. And if, if you have an iPhone or iPad, the, the beautiful thing about that is it goes right to uh, your cloud storage and it's immediately available on my, my computers and every device. So I don't have to transfer anything. It's downloaded on, on here, but it's already available on my computer, and I can use SavvyCan or something like that to analyze it. So, ton of features. It's super powerful. This is really an update for the data nerds, people like me that want to be able to log. Obviously, this is stuff that I want to work with, um, and uh, I'm super excited about it because it, it, it makes a lot of my work easier when I'm analyzing every little update. Um, but I can now log two CAN buses simultaneously. It replaces uh, a CAN logger that's several thousand dollars. Um, and uh, it's more reliable than it was before. I mean, and, uh, you know, so, I, so I'm still trying to sell these barely above cost because I just, uh, I, not everyone has a ton of money. Um, and I'd love to see if they really are curious to get into this. And of course, it's still as a base function of plugging in and feeding your displays. Uh, and you know, all, all, all winter now, I have my uh, displays set to um, always my battery current, but as well as my battery balance and uh, temperature. And I've mentioned before, Teslax works natively. It connects via Wi-Fi to the CAN server. But again, something that's never been available for, for the phone apps is you're now connecting simultaneously to two CAN buses 
and you're seeing way more uh, nodes and items available than you could ever connect to, ever see on a single bus. And of course we have the full data speed of Wi-Fi, so we really can get everything. So I'll just demonstrate in Teslax, and there we go. We've got data live in the Teslax from both buses simultaneously over Wi-Fi. I'll even move a little bit so you can see. <laughs> so it replaces the OBD dongle, but for the same price, you're getting a lot more speed. For a little bit more money, you get two CAN buses. And uh, again, Teslax, this works beautifully with. There are a ton of signals that you can watch with this. Just beautiful. <laughs> and of course, there's thousands more you can add. And like I said, hopefully to scan my Tesla ad support soon. And another thing is we've been updating SavvyCAN to support all this. So SavvyCAN now has a version that natively works with the very small CAN server log format um, and can work with them directly. So I'm super excited to have the new CAN server available. I have been shipping it out to a few people already. Um, the firmware is still kind of in development, but it's already more stable than the original version firmware. So that's included when I ship it. And uh, I'll provide files soon for everyone else to update theirs. And hopefully we'll have the final release out very soon. So that's a quick update on the new version of the CAN server. Check out the links below in the description for my website on how to get it and how to install it. Please get in touch with me if you have any questions. And thanks again.